everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first video in the London flat reno makeover series that I'm doing for my grandmother today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the living room from start to finish and you know what this might be my favorite space that I've made over ever since I started my YouTube channel I know most of them have been at home in my house but this space I felt was a really fun challenge and a challenge it was <laughs> Let's jump in and let me refresh your memory of what the living room looked like at the beginning. So as you can see, it's kind of like a plain white space. There's nothing very exciting about it. All the furniture is very mix and match as it was all hand-me-downs and there's some nice pieces, but a lot of it just didn't really go. There's a little bit of clutter and then the fireplace looked very teeny tiny in comparison to the actual chimney itself. So I wanted to do something about that. And most importantly, the couch. The couch was what kind of struck me when I first started this project as a potential problem because that couch it's obviously very bright red. The green cushions were not doing it very much justice, but the couch was um, an obstacle. So I just thought, you know what? I think it'd be more valuable to show you how to work with a piece that you don't like. And I'm really glad I did. So let me show you what I started off by doing. And that is painting the space, which I naively thought would take me like a day or two. Um, I was wrong. Here we go. <laughs> Morning everyone, today is day one of the sitting room makeover and I'm going to start by painting the walls, the trim and the door. So I'm going to get started. I am wearing my pyjamas because I maybe got one hour of sleep last night and I might try and take a nap halfway through the day because I'm really tired. I'm not going to lie, so pyjamas it is. been doing this for about an hour I've already encountered my first problem I'm not happy about <laughs> these big ginormous screws <laughs> are completely rounded out like who did this who did this <laughs> I hate you I hate you I hate you so we're gonna put it back on and pretend like nothing happened <laughs> Okay, this is as good as it's gonna get right now. These are all of my tools. Let's start painting. I've been painting this room and a couple of the other rooms around here and I haven't yet finished this room but let me show you how it's doing. Here's the sitting room progress that's coming along. I need to do another coat on this wall and as you can see I haven't done the top yet but I've taped all the way along the ceiling so I can start that soon and I haven't yet done this wall or that alcove and I'm starting to worry that I'm gonna run out of paint so wish me luck. I cannot believe this has happened to me. <laughs> no, I can't believe it. Brilliant. <laughs> Day 216 of painting the sitting room. But it's all done and it's time to show you the fireplace. 
So I found this old fireplace in a charity shop in my hometown and it was only £15, which was such a bargain and a nice surprise because I never find them in the charity shops anyway. I kind of thought that I was going to have to build like a shelf or something instead just to create um, a faux fireplace in the space. What I like most about this piece is that it's pretty simple but also has a little bit of an ornate touch at the top that really fits with the style of the building and it's the perfect size for the chimney. So the next problem I encountered was installing it. I was back and forth from London to home for this project all the time and I just did not have the tools or equipment to install it. My uncle very kindly stepped in and did it for me and did a wonderful job. Really, 10 out of 10. So sorry I don't have any footage of the install, but this is what it looked like once it was done. Don't mind the mess, I'm about to start cleaning up, but this is what it looks like now that it's been installed. It looks so good in the space, it really just added exactly what this column needed. As you can see, he's also installed the mirror for me as well. I was like, while you're here, would you mind putting the mirror up? And this is how it's looking. Next up, I had to paint that thing. So I taped meticulously around it because I would be damned if I ever had to paint those walls ever again, ever. So then I primed it, let it dry, and I did a good few coats of chalky finish paint. Now this fireplace is not used. I believe it doesn't even work. So I was able to use any kind of paint on it but if you are using a fireplace, once you've painted it, please make sure that the inside, or if you're painting an insert like the one I have at my house, please make sure you use fire resistant paint. Very important. Anyway, that is how that turned out. And because my nan decided to come up and stay with me for a couple of days while I was doing this project, I was not able to get like a fun final reveal shot of her seeing it for the first time because she could see it every day. Um, but I did get this footage of her seeing the fireplace for the first time. Oh my good God! Why <laughs> is that absolutely amazing? Do you like it? That is just unbelievable. I can't believe the change. And it's so beautifully cut in, look at that. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was Andy. <laughs> but, but seriously, is it, hasn't it fitted so well? Mm. That is just amazing. Thanks, well man. Well you, darling. Thank well you. Done. I think it's safe to say that she really liked it. And I really liked it too. This is my favorite thing that we did in the room. And now for the rug. I brought a rug to London that I really loved because it was a DIY project but it didn't work in the space. Um, I will share that project with you later and show you the rug because it looks good somewhere else. No spoilers, but I was a bit stuck because I was like, well, what am I gonna do? We found the perfect rug, perfect size, perfect color palette, really interesting pattern. We found it in the airing cupboard. <laughs> I'm not really sure how it got there. It could have been like handed down from family or it could have been there from the previous tenants, but we found the rug and it works. <laughs> should, should I, oh, cook, be careful, be careful. <laughs> Mind you turn this off. My camera woman was not having it that day. <laughs> but next, we really need to sort out this monstrosity. This is the replacement I found, and it goes really well with the fireplace, I think, and also this round table. This was actually from my house. It was a hand-me-down piece, and it did have some glass here that I dropped, so it no longer has glass. But this, actually, <laughs> Looks like wicker, right? It's cardboard. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna paint these sections to make them match the fireplace and then we can put this in place.
With that done, I then turned my focus to the couch. Like I said, this couch is a very bright colour, not my favourite colour, but I want to show you how to work with something like this because not everyone can just go out and buy a fancy new sectional couch every time they want to do a makeover. I certainly couldn't for this project, very expensive. So I decided to just make it work. I took a few of these anthropology napkins that I've been hoarding in my office for a while and I threw them together in my sewing machine to create a couple of cushions with a similar style of pattern to the rug and to some of the other pieces in the room but because they were kind of still in the same colour family as the couch I think it worked quite well. I didn't want to put like a really contrasting colour on the couch I just thought it would draw your eye to it way too much so the plan of attack was similar colours but pattern. <laughs> Anyway, with that done, it was now time to style the space and this is my favourite part of any project. For the couch, I styled it with quite a few cushions that I actually borrowed from my Nan's house at home. She has too many, she's just like me, <laughs> and a few bits and pieces I brought from my house and popped the TV back on that freshly painted stand that I did earlier and obviously gave everything a quick dust and a clean. You can probably tell that this stand is bowing a little bit, but we hid that with some baskets and some magazines. And um, I also picked up a faux plant. My nan's not around enough to water a real plant, but I really wanted to bring some kind of greenery in here. So I found this actually in Home Bargains and it was a bargain at 16 pounds. I also took loads of the books that were already lying around. We had loads of art books and I just pulled off all of the covers to make them look a little bit cleaner and fresher and stacked them underneath the coffee table that was already there. I brought this small round table from my Nan's house at home again and I got rid of that big black chair and then just kind of styled the mantelpiece with just a few items so it wasn't too crowded. A lot of these we already had or were thrifted pieces or pieces I found very inexpensively. And then those shelves that I couldn't take down, I just decorated with all the bits that we had lying around the flat and made the most of a bad situation. I also turned the table so that it was a little bit easier to walk around and use. So with that being done, this is how the space turned out. And you know what? There were so many times during this whole project where I was just like, I have to give up. This isn't gonna work. I hate this. Even until the very last day, I was thinking it doesn't look very good. But then when I did the styling, I felt like it just came together and it felt right. And it really reflects kind of like my Nan's style and my style. Overall, I am just very, very happy with how it turned out in the long run. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you all of the other rooms in this flat. So that's it. That is everything for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration on how to take a piece of furniture that you don't like and disguise it or just make it work. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Happy decorating and um, see you soon. Bye.